Good evening. I think this year's Wimbledon tournament has been very good, has been very enjoyable indeed. However, I was quite surprised when Andy Murray won the final. The final took place on Sunday, it lasted about uh, four or five hours, and the two players contesting the final were Scotland's Andy Murray, or should I say Great Britain's Andy Murray, and Serbia's Novak Djokovic. Now, Novak Djokovic is ranked first in the world, and Andy Murray is ranked second in the world. Well, it's quite controversial to hear that even though Andy Murray beat Novak Djokovic in the final, he still remains world number two, and Novak Djokovic still remains world number one. But then I thought about it again and it makes sense because Wimbledon is only one of the four major major opens, the major titles in tennis. We have the other three major opens which is the Australian Open, the French Open and the American Open or the US Open as some may call it. And winning the Wimbledon title is only one of those four Opens. So I can see their decision when they decide to keep Andy Murray at, at number two in the world rankings. However, should he win the next Open, or the one after that, I think he can move up to number one, ahead of Novak Djokovic. Now I must say that Andy Murray's road to the final was magnificent. It was a true fairy tale story. I mean, he breezed through the first three matches fairly comfortably. But then came the quarter final. He was against a Spaniard named Verdasco. And Andy Murray went down two sets to nil. But he brought it back. He fought hard and won the match. <laughs> he fought back to two sets, drawing with Ferdasco and then he won the third set. Or should I say the, the fifth set of the game. But he won he won that so that mean that meant he won three sets so he was through to the semi final. It was a magnificent victory. A very late comeback I may say. And it's interesting to note that Sir Alex Ferguson the former Manchester United football club manager was present at the match. The camera zoomed to him on a couple of occasions. It was really coincidental to say the least that he was there. I mean, Manchester United under Alex Ferguson were well known for their late comebacks in matches. For example, the 1999 Champions League final against Bayern Munich at the new camp in Barcelona I believe Manchester United were they were down by the 90th minute but amazingly they they got, got two goals back and they won the match it's a really magnificent story and it's, a, it's it's quite fitting to see Sir Alex Ferguson at the match because Andy Murray himself made a late comeback, just like Manchester United did in 1999. And in the semi-final, Andy Murray was pitted against a pole. His name was Jersey. And again, I thought Jersey was going to be Andy Murray. Or rather, I thought Andy Murray was going to be defeated again as I fought in the quarter-final against Verdasco, but it was not to be. Andy Murray won the match, but Jersey, he did put up a great fight. His serves, they were tremendous, they were thunderous. And his shots too, his volleys, they were incredibly fast-paced. I don't know how Andy Murray, or any tennis player for that matter, could have withstood his power, but he done so and he won. He beat Jersey to go through to the final. 
And it might be worth saying that that match was controversial at times because Jersey, when he was losing to Andy Murray, he demanded that the centre roof court roof be closed. But Andy Murray protested. He thought it, he and many others as well, I included, thought that Jersey was only using it as a... Because he was a sore loser, he thought that closing the centre court roof could somehow raise his chances of uh, launching a comeback and beating Murray. And controversially, the, the, re the match referee decided to close the roof upon the influence of Jersey, who was complaining about it for 40 minutes or so. So I didn't support that decision, just to let you know. <coughs> Jersey, by the way, he's a strange character. He had been compared with the character Jaws out of the James Bond films. He started Moonraker and the like. And I must admit, he did bear some resemblance to Jaws. And it was in the newspapers the next day, quite humorous in my opinion. Uh, you know what the media's like. Uh, but Jersey, he was six foot nine, that was incredible. Even taller than, than Andy Murray. I mean, at the end of the match, when you saw Andy Murray stood alongside with Jersey, there was just no contest. Jersey was huge, he was massive. And a lot more bulkier than Andy Murray, I must say. Anyway, moving on to the final. I have to admit, I thought this really was going to be the time when Andy Murray would be defeated. I thought he'd be defeated the previous two matches, but it was not to be. But I was pretty, almost completely sure he would be beaten this time. By world number one, Novak Djokovic. I mean... Okay, Andy Murray got off to a good start. He won the first set. He didn't win it too comfortably. He won it by six games to four. Uh, so it was quite close. So the first set went to Andy. But in the previous occasions when Andy Murray had played Novak Djokovic and Andy had won the first set, he went on to lose the match. So that wasn't really a good sign considering previous statistics. But to deduce the conclusion of the match based on that statistic, that would be quite unreliable. It's what's called inductive reasoning. Because something has happened a certain way in the past, you conclude that it's going to happen that way in the future. But that's not necessarily the case. And Sunday's match proved that. Even though in the past, Andy, when Andy Murray had gone one set up against Djokovic, he had lost. Yet on Sunday he went one set up against Djokovic, and he won. Defying all the previous statistics that, that the... Statistic... That the people throw at us. Andy Murray defied the odds. So yeah, I thought Djokovic was going to come back and win three sets, and Andy Murray would be gone. But it turned out to be completely opposite. Andy Murray went on to win all three sets straight. And although that looks like a comfortable victory, a bit like a 4-0 victory in football, it wasn't really that comfortable. I mean, Andy Murray, you could, you could see the strain on his face. He was struggling. Djokovic really uh, was a good competitor to face. And we could see that in his... Uh, his replies, his cheeky replies. But somehow, and Danny Murray himself said this at the end of the match, somehow he scraped through and defeated Novak. Much to everyone's surprise. But it was a welcome surprise, we must admit. Uh, so yeah, it was Andy Murray's first Wimbledon title. He reached the final last year against Roger Federer and lost, of course. His famous words at the end of the match were, at least I'm closer now, I'm getting closer. And while he said this, by the way, he was shedding tears. It was 
I didn't find it emotional, but lots of other people across Britain did. So, yeah, it was a good match for a good win for Andy, and he's only aged 26, which was fairly young for tennis players. I mean, I, th I think Roger Federer's in his 30s. But here's a statistic for you. Novak Djokovic is only one week. Well, Novak and Nadi Murray were born one week apart. They're both 26 years old, of course. Born one week. One of them born one week after the other. And that's quite strange that they should be matched together in this grand finale of champions. It's as if they're almost uh, brothers. In fact, when they were younger and they were at training camps, tennis training camps, they actually played against each other a number of times, I believe. And uh, believe it or not, Andy Murray won their first ever match. Of course, Novak has won most of the matches, but... Anyway, it's quite hard to predict the outcome of next year's Wimbledon. Obviously, I think Andy Murray has. I think he'll reach the quarterfinals, definitely. I don't know if he'll win it again, that's hard to say. Although, if he keeps training hard like he has done, under his new coach, uh, Ivan Lendl from Czechoslovakia, the previous legendary tennis champion who was very pop, very powerful in the 70s and the early 80s. I think he's a brilliant coach for Andy Murray and he'll certainly develop him further in his tennis prowess. Uh, so yeah, hard to predict, but Andy Murray has been in the... He has reached the quarterfinals in the last six or seven Wimbledons now, so... You'd hardly see a player so consistent as that, and I think we'll see that continuing next year, definitely. So, I guess we'll look forward to next year's Wimbledon, and uh, see you guys later.